the dark ages by l read for LibriVox.org by sonia the dark ages men call you dark what factory then blurred the light of golden suns when nothing blacker than the shades of coming rain climbed up the heather mantled height while the air breathed all the scents of all untrodden flowers and brooks poured silver through the glimmering glades then sweetly wound through virgin ground must all that beauty pass and must our pleasure trains like foul eruptions belch upon the mountain head must we perforce build vulgar villa lanes and on sweet fields of grass the canting scutcheons of a cheating commerce spread men call you dark did that faith see with cobwebbed eyes that built the airy octagon on ely's hill and gloucester's eastern wall that woos the topaz skies where the hymn angelic glory be to god on high and peace on earth to men who feel good will might softly sound god's throne around is that a perfect faith which pew-filled chapels rears where gothic fronts of stone mask backs of ill-baked bricks and where the frothy fighting preacher fears as peasants fear a wraith his deacon's frown or some just change in politics men call you dark was chaucer's speech a muddy stream the language born of norman sun and saxon snow was langland's verse or wycliffe's prose mere glow-worm's gleam and the tales of arthur's sword and of the holy grail and avalon the isle where no storms blow from such romance did no light glance have we not heard a tongue whose words the saxon thralls would scorn to speak above their muckrake and their fork the speech of barrack rooms and music halls where every fool has flung the rotten refuse of calcutta and new york men call you dark but chivalry and honour stand as words that you not we did fashion when the need of food beyond the price of gold awoke our land for you taught inconstancy is like a standard lost and we who prove untrue in love or deed will doubly shame an ancient name your robes were not all white your soul was not a sea where all the crystal rivulets of god found room but we must often to your lessons flee our truth with yours unite before we meet the holy dayspring of the doom end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bells of venice by l read for librivox dot org by sonia the bells of venice ring out again that faltering strain cease not so soon sweet peal that brought to me the thought of some deep shadowed english lane across the blue lagoon the water street where oarsmen meet and shout ahead the glowing key all noise and glee seemed hallowed as when angels feet touched jacob's stony bed on pearly dome and princely home day's glory dies once more the bell's low murmur tells that faith is not a line of foam nor life a bridge of sighs end of poem this recording is in the public domain an ancient church by l read for librivox dot org by sonia an ancient church so little dost thou seem of common earth so much of spirit doth thy fabric show that we who watch thee through the azure glow might deem that with the stars thou camest to birth so sweet and true the voices from thy spire which bless the day's betrothal unto night that when they falter with the fading light we well might think an angel touched his lyre 
if chiselled stone and molten bronze instil hopes deeper than the fountains of my tears and love that hungers for eternity god i believe thou hast some use for me leave me no life of dumb and sluggard years but cut or melt me till i speak thy will end of poem this recording is in the public domain To the English Gypsies by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Rough, swarthy gypsy folk, would that my voice could once forget to falter and sing a song as free as swallows' wings of ancient gypsies and their dukes and kings, the men who braved the branding rod and halter because like birds they nimbly came and went and loved the stars and road in crouching tent beneath a grove of oak in ages long ago the brahmin priests pursued you with their curses because you found life sweeter at the core without the mumbling of their magic lore and you have lived to see their sanskrit verses fall dead and brahmins like mere romany now tempt their gods by trusting to the sea though trembling while they go then hardened against fear you looted caravans of gold-shot dresses and gems upon their way to bright baghdad and drove the moslem caliph rampant mad when pearls called from the ocean for the tresses of a circassian in your pouches fell as trifles to adorn the dusky shell of some black virgin's ear next greece and thessaly became the home of many a jocund roamer who gaily danced or begged with mean forlorn and patched his indian speech where it was torn with remnants from demosthenes and homer until you struck your blackened tents again and tattered pageants crossed the endless plain of fertile hungary tis even said you planned to trick the pope with penitential moaning and gained his leave to wander seven years towards the melancholy north with tears the sin of feigned apostasy atoning thus fortified against inquiring foes you with the budding of the tudor rose alighted on our land who says it was not good to see your handkerchiefs of red and yellow and silver rings and basket-laden carts and hear the honey-lipped prophetic arts of wheedling witches or a clean-limbed fellow who fiddled by the hedgerow in the smoke and roused the antique gypsy song that woke the silence of the wood now that your blood must fail what artist soul revengefully remembers you raided the domain of chanticleer or deftly poisoned pigs to swell your cheer of hedgehogs cooked in clay amid the embers who says you sometimes wedded art to force or made the worse appear the better horse before a coming sail you soon will pass away laid one by one below the village steeple you face the east from which your fathers sprang or sleep in moorland turf beyond the clang of towns and fairs your tribes have joined the people whom no true Romany will call by name. The folk departed like a campfire flame of withered yesterday. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Autumn Dying by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo autumn shakes in golden raiment gashed with red 
none can ransom him by payment from the dead they have shorn his strength with reaping left him cold now he wakes each morning weeping weak and old and last night he sought my casement came and fled wailed for aid from roof to basement touched my bed though i cannot find his ransom ere he dies i will pay all that i can some hopes and sighs and a poem this recording is in the public domain the departure for cythera by l read for LibriVox .org by sonia the departure for cythera ere they parted for cythera when the spring had reached its bloom phyllis doris and niera peeped into their pictured room wished to go yet wished to linger lifted each a taper finger threw a kiss towards their portraits set in walls of rose brocade where the beeches lift a curtain over shifting sunlit scenes they with footsteps light and certain used to dance like fairy queens now they speed beneath the beeches till the path the water reaches and the bay just softly ripples by a marble balustrade purple were the sails that beckoned and the deck was ivory love stood smiling there and reckoned his embarking company every mast wore silver sheathing music in the air was breathing in the rigging little laughing cupids upwards climbed and strayed on they sailed through fields of azure white was all their furrowed way melting in a blue erasure melting fast like yesterday radiant hope still steered them hoping steered them past the woodland sloping where the doves descend and flutter on an ancient colonnade on they passed through golden hazes watching distant peaks of snow on through shadowed island mazes where the dreamy spices blow till the moon herself was setting and the dew fell fast and wetting and the silver masts no image on the blackening waves displayed frayed are now the rose-red panels filled with squares of rare brocade in the ceiling time carves channels where the frescoes slowly fade chipped are now the scrolls of plaster which a skilled italian master moulded all along the cornice and with tips of gold overlaid but the shallow oval spaces underneath the white festoons hold the tender pastel faces waiting endless afternoons for they never touched cythera phyllis doris and niera and again they never landed by the marble balustrade end of poem this recording is in the public domain the village cherub by l read for librivox dot org by sonia the village cherub up at the church at the edge of the moor flat on the pathway that leads to the door worn by the tread of the morning and poor there is a face that is fit for god's floor how could a mason create in his brain just such a cherub to sob in the rain how could the pride of the dying but vain want such a cherub to blow a refrain this one had ankles with which he could run is it a fact that a cherub has none this one had love locks that flashed in the sun yes and his lips often pouted in fun who was the angel that played on the street whose was the face i can't soil with my feet nobody knows but i hope i shall meet one such a cherub in front of god's seat end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Lady Day near Bignor by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Lady Day near Bignor. South eastward, where the waving line of hills bears up the clouds that speed like passing boats, on one sweet spot which distant sunlight fills, a sudden silver haze descends and floats. The trees below, like lace, veil glistening streams. The gorse puts on its tiny gloves of gold. The cattle move as though they fed in dreams, and timid lambs are bleating in the fold. Though tangled bracken, like an old man's beard, blends autumn's ruddy brown with winter's grey, soft blows the breeze that through the pines is heard. Green moss and yellow primrose deck the way. The Roman villa level on the grass with wrestling cupids on the floor within the church where first a norman priest said mass the ivy chimneys of the georgian inn these have their message all things tell the change of seasons races and of man's estate all bid us mark within how small a range there moves a story tragically great the hills abide and that mysterious breath which brooded on the slowly shaping earth and came to-day like dew to nazareth to fashion our redeemer's virgin birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain a cottage inscription by l read for librivox dot org by sonia a cottage inscription time trieth troth who carved the text above the narrow cottage door two hundred years of storm have vexed the words which front the western moor was it a hind who loved the king that held his court beyond the sea a hind who taught his child to sing of stuart rose and stuart tree was it a swain whose soul adored a maid who went to london town and did she choose some spangled lord and coldly flout her country clown time trieth troth and was he true whose chisel carved that rugged line and was he loyal till the yew overarched his heart's now silent shrine then though bereft of king or love he found the poet's secret gain the sympathy of suns above the friendship of the falling rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain a memory of ireland by l read for librivox dot org by sonia a memory of ireland where the saints of holy ireland sleep no chancels pen them round but the waving trees their vigils keep above each verdant mound here they climbed no lofty marble beds to find a frigid rest but a canopy of golden threads hangs over them in the west when the larks have ceased their thankful hymn the ocean booms his bell and the lamps of heaven swing over the rim of every holy well may the lord bring back that race of men whom charity enticed to desert the world for some poor glen and give the people christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain Tierna Nog by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Tierna Nog. When thou didst die, they say a fairy's pipe was heard outside the castle door, and we folk thick as August corn that's ripe came trooping down the moor, and bore thy soul with laughter and with light, 
o'er glen and heathered height friends wake thee till the dawn thrice slanted by to quench the tapers round thy bier and countless decades of the rosary they numbered with a tear but yet they whispered she is now a queen and clad in rainbow green they set thy form near blessed finnan's side and wailed the gallic death lament but they believed thee happy as a bride with long dreamed joys content within the land they name with wistful tongue the land where all are young end of poem this recording is in the public domain a highland day by l read for librivox dot org by sonia a highland day within sight of culloden the snow-white borders of the grey-green sea peep through the mist that veils the strait with dew the sun grows bold and smites the landscape free the burn the woods the rocks of rose-red yew the world lies warm upon the heart of day the callants push their boat from off the shore the white gulls sail and flutter through the bay the jet-black daws are calling evermore the doves fly wheeling past their mountain wall the whispering pine trees weave a ceiling cool the rowans redden over the foaming fall the ferns keep guard around the fairies pool the distant moorland where the tribesmen bled to win their wandering prince a royal home now wraps a deeper purple on their bed while he sleeps cold below st peter's dome the waves turn opal in the waning light the rocks exchange for grey their rose-red bloom the finite sinks into the infinite and sea and sky are wedded in the gloom end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the firs by l read for LibriVox.org by nemo i love the oak grove where the druid's knife cut down the mistletoe in days of old i love the elms around the convent fold where souls escape the dust of highway life i love to watch the tiny milk-white spires that on the chestnut branches lift their head i love to see the rowan growing red with clusters bright as frosty winter fires but better still i love you firs that crest the lonely hill above the moaning firth beside the path where bluebells gently nod to your gray arms ere sunset leaves the west i can confide each sorrow at its birth for you have known the waves and storms of god end a poem this recording is in the public domain goodbye by l read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Goodbye. Sing me one more villanelle, light as elfin foot that brushes through the ferns and foxgloves of the fairy dell. Come where woodland spices smell, where the wild rose faintly flushes. Sing me one more villanelle. Rare as snowy heather bell, sweet as melody of thrushes through the ferns and foxgloves of the fairy dell when the shade creeps up the fell mid the parting sun's last blushes sing me one more villanelle sing it to the curfew knell where the streamlet plays with rushes through the ferns and foxgloves of the fairy dell let it breathe no sad farewell only mirth with silent hushes sing me one more villanelle through the ferns and foxgloves of the fairy dell end of poem this recording is in the public domain
The Fairy Glen Revisited by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. That pure and shy retreat a Tartar would have spared, but not that lawyer cur from Inverness who thought its sylvan virgin loveliness would bring him gold if rudely bared and hawked upon the street their children checked their race and crept on tiptoed feet lest they should break upon the rainbow rings of fairies glinting through transparent wings or kindly wizard come to meet a maid with lovelorn face no snow nor stinging sleet could chill the fairy's bath so close the vaulting was with fir and larch which laid deep carpets underneath their arch that on the fairy's silent path no blast could ever beat mid foam more white than fleece the waterfall rang sweet it made each rocky cup a rippling well it coyly dived and peeped along the dell then ran the rising sea to greet and greeting found its peace and now the cold and heat scourge all the glen with ire the broken boughs have choked the sobbing stream the silver birch is but a sodden beam the fairy's path is sunk in mire the moss has left their seat flash sorrow and disdain for this most sordid feat you whom burns taught to love a daisy's face and scott to love the mountain's glooming grace or say they scattered chaff for wheat and sang their songs in vain end a poem this recording is in the public domain waiting by l read for librivox dot org by sonia waiting based on the gallic fieravata the year may change its time but still i climb the cliff above the sea and look with eyes half dim with rain to know if god has brought again my lover back to me when darkness downward glides and slowly hides the fading hills of blue i never bar the cottage door without one look across the moor a look of hope for you sometimes when i am free i seek the key soon after break of day and find a newly harboured boat and ask if you are still afloat near home or far away i ask if you are well and they can tell my heart is set on you and then they call me just a fool a baby in the world's hard school to give you love so true you promised me silk gowns from lowland towns and rings of twisted gold and best of all your picture bound with stones to hem its beauty round that i might kiss and hold my love is not the flower of one short hour you were my childhood's pride your image is my dream by night by day if ever put to flight it comes back like the tide the swan upon the lake when robbers take her young is left to moan none tends her wounds or heeds her cry she wails her loss and waits to die like her i cry alone end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Near Harlem by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Near Harlem. Triumphantly it soars, that full domed sky of lucent turquoise fading into pearl and here the happy birds their brown wings furl by waters that lisp seaward dreamily beyond these plains of silver and of green amid the floating vapors of the town the vast gray church 
uplifts its belfry crown, a chiseled shrine through incense dimly seen. The bird in barges trusts the smiling flood, calm wraps the distance of reclining dunes, the tower rings peace in soft alternate tones. And who that hears the bell's low luting tunes now thinks of Harlem's siege and starving moans, or how these brooks once bubbled with brave blood? End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tomb of St. Augustine at Pavia by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt. Beneath the low barbaric Lombard apse, it rises like a ridge of alpine snow, and rye wheeled ages with uneasy lapse creak past its majesty and go. Such music as leaves Milan's marble spires to mount towards a greater, whiter throne, or tempts to earth again seraphic choirs, is at Augustine's shrine unknown. No wave of pilgrim footsteps surges here, no sheaf of tapers lifts its votive gleam, the half-taught critic comes not with his sneer, when I draw nigh, dear saint, to dream. Enough if far-off sounds of children's glee bid me to take and read God's open call, or some sad Monica pray here to see her son, like thee, a second Paul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Modern Florence by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt. Modern Florence. Hard by the home of Dante's infant life, I saw a Yankee cake walk advertised. Within St. Miniato's pillared aisle, a Japanese was peering unsurprised. Where Michelangelo sat dawn and night, and her most blessed, whose softly sculptured smile glows with a maiden's and a mother's light, a German Jew was nagging with his wife. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Dante by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt. To Dante. The church divided, and the empire fell. Grave Dante, but thy verse in magic grows, and charms man upward to the snow-white rose of heaven from the mire and grief of hell. No lonely isle of dull forgetfulness hides Beatrice within its shadowed gloom, for mid the petals of thy rose's bloom, time's hand has set that pearl of loveliness. Though patched and powdered poets could not taste thy limpid sweetness and expose thy fame to meet the leering Frenchman's cynic air, thy love was fair without brocade or paste, thyself too great to need a gilded name. Thy comedy and God survive Voltaire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Petrarch by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. Yes, Petrarch, we most certainly believe that you who wore your heart upon your sleeve did love your love for Laura and the eye of public fame at which your sonnets fly like skyward larks that caught the genial sun and o'er the tears you treasured one by one you downward bent with all the statue's grace to see reflections of your tearful face but none redeemed by love will e'er consent to say you tasted of love's sacrament End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Lady of the Eighteenth Century by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. In memory of Metastasio. Nice, though your lips of coral 
now are dust. And the schoolboy scans the moral, graven on your broken bust. In the gilt Barocco chapel, after mass, where ten coats with broidered lapel bent where nice used to pass. Still perchance your spirit hovers where the lute and the voices of your lovers chimed but now are gone and mute where the lonely arbor's hollow shadier grows and the butterflies can follow fearlessly to kiss the rose and you smile because a poet a la mode flouted you and then we know it wrote an abject palinode for your hands though light as feathers held him tight love was made to last all weathers not to change with day and night end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Liberal Divine by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt. The middle path meets every need, the Stegirite and Buddha say. I won't doubt more than half the creed, nor wear a costume wholly lay. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Quarrel by Al read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. Suggested by a picture of Fragonard. On the elm tree she was swinging, just beyond the hedge of yew. But she slowly ceased from singing, from her breast a pink she drew. Buttoning his coat of satin, off he strode towards the wood tartly quoting virgil's latin that a woman's maid of moods long ago within god's garden both were wrapped in long lone sleep heeding not if hoar frosts harden or the autumn leaves fall deep laugh not at the statue calling phyllis with her marble muff nor the marble cupid sprawling on a cloud of powder puff laugh not at his hermit fashions nor the book unwarmed by hope say not that it shows the passions of a stony misanthrope for they loved while they were living loved with love untold unheard Though they parted unforgiving, each too proud to say a word. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Old Fountain by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. One gay glint of rose and silver flounces in a deep green dell, where a streamlet bubbles down and bounces from a triton's mossy shell. One more dance ere sunset on the mountain, laughing says, too late. One sweet lute that tinkled with the fountain called two hearts to court their fate. Some small raindrops, just to tease the triton, mischievously fell. Someone spoke a jest that quenched the light on, eyes that he had long loved well. That dark night he cursed the love he brought her, though it made his soul, and she sobbed an echo to the water, brimming in the fountain bowl. And a poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Love and Death by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. Once toward a sunlit garden, laden with the lime tree's scented breath, came to watch a merry youth and maiden, love and death. At their bosoms, love threw fragrant posies, tossed them laughing low and blithe. In the background, death amid the roses moved his scythe. Ere the latest rose the path was strewing, her sweet maiden soul was fled. He beside her grave, his cheeks bedewing, bent his head. Sobbing love then thought to give him pleasure, bade his curse on death attend. But the youth begged death, who held his treasure, be his friend. Death his friend might give the old completeness, time could give to him no more. Death, not love alone, the former sweetness, might restore. Love then saw the youth was worthier loving, dowered with a stronger grace, and with downcast eyelids, shyly moving, kissed death's face. End a poem. This recording is in the public domain. Violets by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Emma Charlotte. Where burning tapers hold white suppliant hands from arms of gold around the host. There no one sets sweet violets. Fair roses droop and die in halls of dance and minstrelsy. But who within those walls has met? the violet where faintly smiles the sun through checkered skies on beech groves done there hides in veils sequestered yet the violet where i shall lie asleep some friend perhaps a tear will weep and if our love knew no regret Strew violets. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Gardens of the Soul by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Nemo. The Gardens of the Soul. In a restless land beside a river stands a stone enclosure tall. Rich the finder is, and rich the giver, of the key to pierce that wall. Once within, you drink the clearest pleasures, and your sorrow changes for ease. Ancient bards enchant you with their measures, sweetly sighs the highland breeze. Next amid the orange trees and cedars, bearded Homer deigns to roam, musing tales of marching Argive leaders. And Ulysses welcomed home. Here, where daffodils their crowns are bending, On a lawn of English green, Milton gravely sits to tell the ending Of angelic strifes unseen. Here the almond bloom forever blushes, And Italian fountains rise, While the wine of dawn their dewdrops flushes, Dante speaks of paradise. But beyond where any poet paces grows a gnarled gray olive grove where the furthest stars have veiled their faces weeping for eternal love end a poem this recording is in the public domain a man to childish things by l read for LibriVox.org by Nemo Where are the domes of pure mysterious gold and myriad angel wings in ordered flight 
my childish gaze could once at eve behold before the mountains melted into night where is the island shy abode of bliss which seemed through summer haze to rise and float the isle which merchant fleets could never kiss but once stood still for brendan's hermit boat where are my paladins with souls of snow whose swords were fashioned at no mortal forge the men who rode where arthur bade them go to meet the dragon in his dungeon gorge o oh, happy happy dreams ye were no lies no true apostle made me put away such childish things which mirrored to mine eyes faith hope and love i call you back to stay and a poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Night by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Oshiro. He was so courteous to the Paynim horde, man doubted if he served the Lord or held the faith of Christ. They said he proudly scorned life's sweetest prize, who never played with sparkling eyes or kept an evening tryst. The god of love was but cupidity, the lord an idle vanity, with mail below his vest, while he, true knight, believed in Christ alone, and though, they thought, his heart a stone made love a hero's quest end of poem this recording is in the public domain hopes by l read for librivox.org by oshiro to have lived just like a man and done what one man can not basking like a dog in summer dust, nor like a butterfly that flaunts and flutters by, till showers have dimmed its silver wings with rust. To have lightened some stiff load of man upon the road, may some remember I am flesh and blood, to have dried some children's tears and slain some women's fears that bid them crouch beneath a brooding flood. To have known the throbbing stars and traced the ancient scars that streams have ploughed upon the mountainside to have sung songs passing sweet and sung with lasting heat as pure as that of stars that burn and bide. To have said the simply true, although to preach the new, might win me prizes and the world's cares to have been misunderstood. If so, the common good, my beer more harvest through my loneliness. To have learned that love is light in rain and fog and night, for eyes that sadly peer and feed that plot, to have found all life a song of rapture calm and strong, and found the music of the song was God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Path by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson To buzzing lecture halls his steps he bent, Where all the paths to God were well discussed, Of faith and reason weighed with balance just, Till he was dizzy with strong argument. He saw philosophers who shook their fists And broke commandment nine. He saw the Sadducean alchemists Draw water out of wine. He saw the knife-eyed Pharisees adjusting their phylacteries, 
but never found the gate where he could see the one in three he watched the hills as dawn unlocked the day and felt vibrating o'er the low green lea the breath of lilac and of hawthorn tree while gold laburnums rocked each pendant spray he saw the sun salute the moon afar and felt their common soul he heard the song of the star to sister star around the sky's deep bowl he watched the waves withdraw their foam he watched the rivers winding home he found the one and yet he could not see the one in three still doubting he beheld a brother man whom he ignored and scorned to think akin but now a sudden breath of love within drove him to serve and humbly he began his hands that worked in love were torn with red he shrank not at the sight for he who suffered saw a heart that bled become his beacon light thus brother to the son of god with life from heaven on earth he trod the life the light the love he knew to be the one in three end of poem this recording is in the public domain the call to bethlehem by l read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson shepherds come to bethlehem pluck yon bush of christmas rose weave a dainty diadem from my flute with tuneful stem music warbles as it flows shepherds come to bethlehem low upon the mountain's hem ruby clouds above the snows weave a dainty diadem seek not proud jerusalem where the empty temple shows shepherds come to bethlehem christ without a crown or gem lies on straw while winter blows weave a dainty diadem christ will not our gift condemn all our poverty he knows shepherds come to bethlehem weave a dainty diadem end of poem this recording is in the public domain a christmas lullaby by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson adapted from the spanish stars stay your bright amethyst cars flee not away wait till the day come and adore flowers born in the morning's first hours stars of the earth bloom for christ's birth come and adore birds songs are far fresher than words christ is your son sing every one come and adore streams whisper in tune with christ's dreams throw your sweet spells from crystal bells come and adore breeze say to all lands and all seas this merry morn jesus is born come and adore child seeking the lost in the wild though thou this sleep smile on thy sheep come to adore end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the holy child by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson as painted by raphael o lord thyself has taught that sight is not belief and yet within thine eyes i see eternity the love which told the dying thief that he should rest in paradise is there though thou art still a child at mary's knee the joy of perfect sacrifice is there and that unfathomed grief in which our griefs have sunk like tears in one wide sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain Mater Amabilis by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As painted by Botticelli. Mary, on the Prince of Peace, thy gladness gleams from radiant eyes, but their light is touched with passing sadness, like our English summer skies. Angels' arms above thy head are holding crowns of golden stars, but the baby hands thy breast enfolding show to thee their future scars 
lilies sense thee with their exultations but thy heart has guessed slanders of the scoffing generations who will call thee cursed not blessed so when the clouds of faint foreboding sorrow from an unknown sea come to warn me of a broken morrow mother mary pray for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain saint stephen by l read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson i see that i must die o christ how shall i bear the cruel stones e'en though there be a place among the thrones at thy right hand for me create again the very sinews of my soul i ask not for an aureole but strength to brave the pain help me for life is dear the growing rapture of the summer morn the cedared hills the soft checkered rose born within the cooling breath of hermon's snow the rare reluctant shaded streams the sea that sings and weeps and dreams i love them thou dost know i loved my father's faith the synagogue with all its sacred gear the feasts that guard the march of every year the trumpets lamps and waving of the palms the azure fringe on robes like milk the yellow scrolls wrapped round with silk the triumph of the psalms i love to preach the truth to thrust and parry in a fair debate to trace god's dayspring in his nation's fate to lift up christ who dying broke death's bands i loved to give men joy for sighs to win the thanks of widows eyes and children's trustful hands the truth yes i will die the chafing sanhedrin shall not prevail to check me they shall see the truth full sail they cannot sink truth stone me though they can lord i am ready by thy grace no shade of fear shall cross my face i will play the man end of poem this recording is in the public domain saint john at ephesus by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson men ask why i am left alone my brother james and peter all are slain brave men who met the surging crimson deep with equal minds and mary fell asleep his mother whom he gave me for my own but i with anchored hope remain i loved him it is long ago since i with mary stood upon the hill where his last breath rose up in sacrifice while tears fell earthward from our burning eyes and jews were gibing on the slope below and yet i know he loves me still he loved me and whene'er i dream of sunsets changing into glassy gold the waters of the galilean lake or see in thought the temple portals take a pearly softness from the moonlight gleam he speaks with me as once of old i love him for he first loved me he let me lean upon his holy breast he brought me first to view his empty grave he bade me learn that only love can save and call no fire from heaven but charity i work and wait for he knows best that rome which now oppresses us and all this rout of gray idolatry shall soon dissolve for i can see the light which guides the sun disperse the asian night and straight above the reek of ephesus there burns the love which died for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the little children by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson along the ocean's stormless side below the never setting sun where innocent is every one meet all christ's babes that ever died some home around their monarch seat like doves that flutter to their rest 
within his arms they find their nest and wonder at his wounded feet some make a goal of mary's knee to which they run in joyous race then tell her that their mother's face on earth was just like hers to see some call the angels to their play mid flowers of one unfading spring in radiant wheels they move and sing and learn the angels roundelay but some i think amid those bands remembering our ruder lore and love towards this colder shore lift speedwell eyes and rose-leaf hands end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Circumcision by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. More bright than rosebuds on the rounded base of some veined alabaster urn, wherein a lamp was set to burn and throw false smiles on Aphrodite's face. More bright than crowns of red anemones, which every flushing Syrian year saw laid upon Adonis' bier by morning maidens on adoring knees. More brightly flashed the drops of precious blood, the rubies linked upon the shrine of Christ the Babe, the Christ Divine, to seal his body for the holy rood. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Return of the Magi by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. How they did laugh when mounting our camels the three of us rode obeying the light slowly we cut our hearts from the trammels doubt flung around us that first wistful night only a star above wind and rain only a bloom on the passionless plain waving us onward yet we were right we thank thee lord oft we recalled that kindly derision measuring seas of measureless sand mocked by the streams and trees of the vision moving and melting at magic's command cheated and choked we quailed and burned while the blast blew and the desert was churned sipping it seemed out of god's own hand we praise thee o lord onward we rode where silver meshed rivers sang to the birds which singing replied where the soft light through the rose bowers quivers on past the voice of the bridegroom and bride seeking the desert and star again leaving the homesteads and fields of white grain where the doves called to us to dream and bide we bless thee o lord onward we went past temples that brighten sepulchres hiding souls that are dead chambers where bought lips wearily whiten altars and pavements with hecatombs red onward we travelled to bethlehem guided from zion the earth's diadem on to the stable and manger bed to greet thee lord dimly his eyes flashed laden with presage telling of strife and triumph to be gracious his lips and glowed with a message merciful strong to set prisoners free lord use our myrrh and our urns of gold fairer than children of men to behold thine is the sceptre and victory we worship thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain atonement by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson what love it was that thou shouldst choose to feel the chill of valleys where no dawns emerge to break the mist and streams repeat the dirge for faith crushed like a pearl beneath man's heel how just it was that thou our judge shouldst learn the force of taunts that goad us into sin and slowly aureoled perfection win through blackened hopes and through the stripes that burn thou who didst steal thy will to impotence and wouldst not save thyself or take control of force make us so dead that we may live thou god of sorrows wash our penitence thou who wast naked help each smitten soul christ strong to suffer stronger to forgive end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Calvary by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. As some weak bird tossed homeward by the gale is safely nested in the rocky scar that cleaves the curving beach, but hears afar the ocean writhing at the tempest's flail. So thou, my soul, hast reached the refuge hill that Pilate made a pleasance for his jest, and in Christ's rose red side has found a rest, born half by passion yet by conscious will o lord whose spirit waged so hard a fight scorn not the tainted thing beside thy heart as too unfit to feel that sacred glow but lest i e'er forget how much i owe let not the vision utterly depart of frenzied storm and all-engulfing night end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Desert Shall Blossom by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. Long, long ago he died, and yet he is not dead. From out his riven side and patient hands that bled flows one unebbing tide by love and pity fed. God's heart is satisfied, man's eyes are upward led and o'er the desert wide the dew that's downward shed drawn from that flowing tide forms flowers white and red end of poem this recording is in the public domain resurrection by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson hope last of all the angels left the three who with their woman's courage watched christ die but hope when she had fled returned to plant in them one humble flower the thought that in his gray sepulchre bower they three might strew around the dead the alms of one adoring sympathy and pray a last good-bye they sped in silence but the sharp-fanged doubt lurked in the path to mock their pungent store of spices hissing nay ye cannot reach the tenant of that gloom but when the dawn and they retouched the tomb they found the stone was rolled away and he their life who died now stood without alive for evermore thus when we seek our buried innocence with bitter myrrh and grey-leaved rosemary and writhing doubts delay our steps towards the tomb of our desire do thou, O Lord, our musing eyes inspire to see the stone is rolled away, and find that self has thrown its grave clothes hence and risen to live free. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Ascension by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson lo i am with you alway thus he spake girt with the zone of his disciples love and straightway like the nascent flames that wake upon a placid hearth he soars above forlorn they cannot move their eyes are voyaging to track the friend who promised to be with them till the end once the last once his scar-gemmed hand he lifts the hand that twined the children to his knee once downward bends the pitying eye that sifts our chaff and grain for all eternity the blue immensity robes its creator in a cope of light a cloud receives him from their upturned sight thou always with us do the brakes of thorn no more entangle our tormented earth do women travail less when babes are born costs it less sweat for men to fight with dearth is life one eden mirth moves there more laughter on the purple sea or richer gold across the rippling lee i care not but we know o friend of friends thou throned above art by our weary side the light that upward sailed with thee descends to be our morn undimmed by night 
or tide and thou eternal guide art not content to lead us to thy goal but buildest heaven in the broken soul end of poem this recording is in the public domain a hymn to the holy spirit by l read for LibriVox.org by larry wilson o smile upon the mirror of the world o bearer of the censer whence it curled the fragrant breath of watered trees at eve and fires that slowly in the sunrise weave thou art the why within the universe thou fillest hidden caves which seas immerse thou sowest flowers upon the snow-bound hills and teachest music to the listening rills thou art the guide of man's supreme ascent from sullen shapes that through the forest bent to minds that sift the sovereign right from wrong and forms more perfect than a polished song the lily sceptre of sweet virgin love is thine the rosy coronet above the bridal brow is thine from thee the might of infant eyes like stars that calm the night thou art the spirit of insurgent truth thou givest buried lore a second youth thou makest charity with wisdom grow and provest falsehood but a losing throw thou callest moses from the wealthy nile and all the idols of fair Philae's isle to march for life beneath the desert sun and teach a rabble that their god was one and thou didst barb the tongue of socrates to sting a city settled on the lees to lash the vice of fluent sophistry and crucify the shifting inward lie thou plantedst pity in the indian sage who conned the verses pinned on sorrow's page and strove to cut by mental abstinence the silken cord that threads the beads of sense but could not in himself his pity slake and watching lotto's bloom upon a lake which helpless sank or rose with every wave resolved all sinking souls to lift and save and thou within a cloud of maiden white didst form that sun of radiating light christ's strong immaculate humanity transparent monstrance of his deity he sinless trod the brink of sin's abyss and for his love received a traitor's kiss then driven by thy soft compelling breath he who was life resigned himself to death he showed us that this fleshly house of sense is not a nomad tent or barrier fence but some fair chancel where thy vivid flame might find an altar and reveal his name come holy ghost and breathe from sea to sea give each his special fruit of liberty tear from deceit the scintillating robe from satan's hand hurl down the rod and globe break thou the spirit of the lords of lust whose passions scatter an infected dust reduce the men for whom the poor have bled who elevate their gold as god and bread grant me a mind that may become thy lyre a hate of hatred and a tongue of fire and mid the clamour of all transient things let me not miss the passage of thy wings end of poem this recording is in the public domain adora et take by l read for librivox dot org by larry wilson love only is the school of love and they who learn from thee their art will find thy presence from above touch altar hand and heart while others ask how thou canst come or tell me when thou goest away be mine to call thee to my home and know that thou wilt stay while others all their worship weigh and keenly blame the less or more be mine my lowly best to pay be silent and adore give me to keep thy new command who at thy precious blood was priced make all my world a holy land let all my life be christ end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Refuge of the Wandering by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. 
Cold and cruel as the winds that carry Arctic hills of ice and snow, past the cliffs where skirling seabirds tarry and the seething breakers flow. Burning as the Afric wind that races northward from its desert land, wind that blasts and covers green oases with its ropes of parching sand. Rough and angry as the winds that bluster where Tibetan temples shine, winds like savage lancers come to muster on an eastern frontier line. Sad and blind as winds that wander sobbing, where the raw Atlantic mist, from the stars their pearly radiance robbing, grips the shore with damp white fist. So our souls from every quarter eddy, north and south and east and west, Yesu till the wayward and the ready, on thy heart all sink to rest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Legend of St. Christopher by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. On to the bank that recedes, on through the shadows that mock, tearing my staff from the weeds, bruising my feet on the rock. Caught by this babe who appealed, calling to echoes astray, would that my heart I had steeled, left him to listen till day. Child who dost crush me with weight, child of the pitiful eyes, whence didst thou come to my gate? How didst thou fool me to rise from my lone bed? Sweeter than bells at the mass, older and newer than time, charming the shadows to pass, ringeth his voice in a chime. Firm is the touch of his hands, soft is my mother's caress, loosing my misery's bands, calming the wrath I confess. Child, who hast healed all my pain, joy of my soul, must we part, just when the bank we shall gain? Blessed be these feet on my heart, they too have bled. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Light Invisible by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. O light that lives on every hill and shore, beyond the light that dies at close of day, the tears fill up the chalice of mine eyes with gladness when I see thee far away. O stream that flows until the world shall end, past fretful town and hermitage and field, red are thy waters but they throb with peace. I touch their dew, and all my wounds are healed. O voice that speaks in every grove and street, above the songs of birds and oaths of men, I hear and follow thee, although my steps begin a course that lies beyond my ken. O face returning at each Eucharist, more close than forms that change with changing years, I am the veil between myself and thee, Burn thou the veil, and burning kill my fears. O guest that comes to take away our best, And all the loves we garner at our side, Thou art our best, our home art thou, For thee, attentive, I will labor and abide. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Onward by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. Far, and how far, it is not mine to tell. The hills of silk and gray enfold the veil, and yet above that fell the shepherd knows a way. Far, and how far, it is not mine to guess. A sea of hungry waves surrounds me, but the pilot thwarts their stress with skill that guides and saves. Far, and how far is all unknown to me. The many mansions lie beyond the grave, yet will the builder see, and come to meet my cry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Faithful Departed by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. 
Say what goodbye we owe to those who lived unstained by guile, who seemed to die, but made their death a smile, as though to promise we should meet within a little while. Is this goodbye to sorrow or the blood-red pall of day, till in the sky faint tapers coldly pray, and think our joy died like the buried sun's last golden ray? Is this goodbye to tread on sallow leaves in autumn rain, and hear winds sigh, an echo of our pain, and think that never can the bud-crowned spring return again? Is this goodbye to watch the myriad falling flakes of snow whirl down and lie upon the fields below, and think the wanted path is now too dim for us to know? Not so. Goodbye means faith in love kept warm by robes of white, faith to deny the death of any light, faith that tomorrow will be yesterday without its night. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lethe by L. Read for LibriVox.org by Stephen Christie. Ere we shall touch the jasper parapet that God has set about his garden and the sea of glass, shall we first pass through some calm stream of soft forgetfulness and wash our hapless little joys away? And shall our souls in infant nakedness emerge to bathe in God's eternal day? Shall we forget the garden roundelays of piping maize? when thrushes sang about the dewy lawns in rose-leaf dawns, and tulips, purple, saffron, red, and white, below the shade of box and fragrant bay, would lift to heaven their well-poised heads as bright as ever bloomed in Shiraz or Cathay? Shall we forget the music of the sea, the virgin glee which swayed beneath her robes dyed emerald, and so enthralled the vernal sun that he would downward shower more silver on her violet crystal fringe than ever sultan made his daughter's dower or locked in istanbul with key and hinge shall we forget our hearts did ever ache and slowly break because a dream by lightning truth was rent or we had spent a love too deep for one whole life to speak to gain a joy which proved too light to stay as quickly fading as the tulip's cheek as fickle as the sea in witching may end of poem this recording is in the public domain ave atque vale by l read for LibriVox.org by stephen christie our life is but a rosary of hail and then farewell some never read the mystery the onyx beads foretell they think each bead falls on the ground and spells another loss. God gathers them to make a round and seals it with his cross. End of poem. End of The Dark Ages and Other Poems by L. This recording is in the public domain.